Hi, I'm Tom Edwards. Today, we're going to be talking about Google Assistant and specifically best practices for deploying a Google Action, which you can think about if you're familiar with Amazon and Alexa, think of it as a skill. But an action essentially allows a brand or an organization to basically be deployed across the entire Assistant ecosystem. And that's what we're going to discuss today. At Google I.O. earlier this year, which is their developer conference, Google laid out a strategic plan that basically outlines their shift from a mobile-first organization to an AI-first organization. One of the key foundational elements for this shift is Google Assistant. Google Assistant is basically based on a number of key technologies within Google. You take into consideration natural language processing. You take into consideration their knowledge graph, as well as machine learning products. An assistant actually transcends much more than what you might think in terms of Google Home. It's a part of Google Home. It's now available on the iPhone. It's available via Android. It's available via Wear, TV, and even Auto. So the ecosystem associated with deploying against Google Assistant, it's rapidly accelerating. One of the key things to consider too is that Google Assistant is going to be a key foundational element in a lot of the emerging technologies that Google is going to be bringing to market over the course of the next few years. You think of the, you immediately think about computer vision and the impact it's going to play on tw in 2018. I've recently published a video about that. But you start thinking about the association of Assistant with computer vision and working through the environment around you, and that's going to be a core foundational element. Bringing it back to Assistant for Brands, one of the things that's important to consider here is that with, you can actually deploy against Assistant, similar to what you've done with Amazon and Amazon Alexa. I wanted to compare and contrast some of the differences between launching an Amazon Alexa skill versus a Google Home action. I've recently deployed both. About a month or so ago, I deployed a Blackfin 360 Alexa skill, so that's available. You can actually search for Blackfin 360 and enable via Amazon. And I've gone through the process now of final, getting final approval for my Google Action. So I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the, the, the comparisons between the two. You know, let's start with looking a little bit at the Alexa skills. Alexa skills have been one of the hot topics in the, over the course of 2017. So starting with CES, Alexa, Alexa Voice Services was the talk of the show. Now there are over 15,000 skills that are available via the platform. You know, they've recently launched the Amazon Alexa show, which I've done, recently done a video about, talking about the, the intersection of voice plus visual and how it's still important to develop for voice first versus the visual component. With Google Assistant, there are certain things to consider. First of all, you have about 200 million devices that are already Google Assistant enabled. Yes, 200 million. The ecosystem for home is quite extensive because you start thinking about it. Assistant, again, it supports, it supports Google Home. It's, it's available on the iPhone. It's available via Android. It's available via, via Android Wear, TV, and Auto. So the fact of actually taking and deploying an action within Google Assistant, you're not just going to touch the home market. You're also going to be touching all of these other kind of various touch points along the way. And that's part of Google's larger strategy and play with actions. So it's incredibly important for brands to consider the role that Google Assistant is going to play for how they're going to connect with consumers. So you start thinking about some of the, the, the differences between the platforms. With Alexa, as I mentioned before, you actually have to go and enable a skill in order for that to be accessible via Alexa, via voice interface. With Google and Google Assistant and in action, that's not necessarily the case. Once you've actually gone through all of the approval process, you're able to then quickly take and a user can simply activate your invocation term via text or voice to be able to launch your action. The other thing too is if a user knows specifically where they're going, you can actually deep link into your action so they can go to a very specific, uh, specific experience within the action. A couple of the other advantages now with Google Home is that in Google Assistant is that it can support transactions, third-party transactions outside of the Amazon ecosystem. It can also then begin to identify individuals based on, on voice as well. But one of the key points to consider is the fact that Google Assistant is also going to be a foundational element to some of the emerging technology that's coming from Google with this whole shift towards being an AI-first organization. So you start to think about computer vision aligned with Assistant and the whole object-oriented object -oriented recognition or object recognition that's going to be happening from an environment perspective that's then mapping to Assistant. 
understanding the role that your brand can play across touch points through Assistant is a key point to consider. Because the way the experiences actually manifest themselves, if an individual is looking to launch your action within, say, the Google Assistant app, it can almost serve as like a conversational chatbot experience to where it's, it's right there, it's visual, they can see the conversational thread and interact. Whereas if the experience is with Google Home, it's going to be a voice-driven experience. So again, building the experiences with this in mind, understanding that you're going to have users that are interfacing from a voice perspective, as well as potentially visually, is another key point to consider. So when it comes to deploying skills and actions, when I was working with the Amazon team and getting the Blackfin 360 Alexa skill launched, it only took one, maybe two uh, uh, revisions to actually get the skill submitted, reviewed, and actually deployed. So I had to validate um, ownership of an entity. That was one of the key things that we had to, to do with the Amazon side. Google was a little more complex, and you can understand why. Because you're deploying across a system in all the various ecosystems, you have to make sure that make sure that you have a privacy policy in place. So there are, there are lines of questioning that are tied to the use of data, as well as just a number of how you're going to be interacting with, uh, with the user during that period of time through, pri through a privacy policy. One of the other core things to consider here too as well is I had to actually record my invocation term in both with a male voice and a female voice to make sure that there's an association when the skill actually launches. So that was something I wasn't expecting. And it's taken about five or six iterations. There have been little things that have popped up during the submission process. So as you're thinking about launching a Google Action, make sure you're building in enough time that you can have enough revisions versus trying to get something in market to coincide with a campaign or a promotion. It's just something to, to keep an eye on because I have noticed a bit of a difference between both deploying on against the Amazon ecosystem as well as the Google ecosystem. One of the final points to consider is really around discovery of the action. So I did notice that the, the full list of actions are available only on an Android device. So if you go into the actual home application, click on the hamburger menu, you can drop down and actually see all of the apps. They're not, you can't really filter it, you can't really search against it, but they are there. So again, if you are gonna deploy an action, it's important for your, your consumers to know that A, that it's available, and B, what it can do. So there still needs to be some education in a similar manner to what you would do with an Alexa skill. But in this case, you don't necessarily have to ask the user to actually enable anything to, for it to, to launch within the Google Assistant ecosystem. 2017 has definitely been the year of conversational interfaces from the just excitement around Alexa voice services and the integration to all sorts of products at CES earlier this year, to some of the exciting news from Google, to, to what we're gonna see coming very quickly in 2018 with computer vision. So it's incredibly important to think beyond just, think beyond just the tactical skill aspect of it and really have to, you really have to think about the role that assistant's going to play in the everyday journey of a consumer and then the role that your brand is going to play across all these various touch points from voice to visual. It's a really key point to consider and I can't, I can't reiterate enough how critical this is going to be as systems begin to take more burdens from individuals and you begin to see these virtual assistants becoming proxies and agents on our behalf. So making sure that your organization is there that you're providing value across whatever the, whether it's, whether it's at home, whether it's on the go via auto, whether it's via where, whether it's on the iPhone or wherever it may be, so incredibly important to begin thinking about your strategy and, and the role of Google Assistant and Alexa are going to play. Well, that's it for today. I'm Tom Edwards. You can follow me at Blackfin360 on Twitter. I'm also available via blackfin360.com for the long form content, as well as all of the videos uh, that I've touched on during the course of uh, this video. I'm also available via Alexa, so you can actually enable the Blackfin360 skill directly from amazon.com. And now, finally available via Google Assistant and Google Home. So with Google Assistant, you can just ask Blackfin360, and within Google Home, you can just say, hey Google, ask Blackfin360. Have a great day.